Hello, this is Cuckoo, and I'm here at Superbooth 2022 with Václav Belushek from Bastel Instruments. Hello. Good to see you again. Very good to see you too. It's been such a long time, but we've kept in touch over the years, and uh, yeah, I've been following your work all, yeah, all the time. Thanks, yeah, we've been busy. It's been a bit of a different mode, but yeah, there's some good stuff that came out, so. Yeah, just a couple of days ago, I checked the press release of the new stuff that you're releasing now, and also the, the Soft Pop 2. But what really caught my attention this time was the, the new uh, FM, uh, would you call it an FM synth, or it's, it's more than just an FM synth, like the pizza? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's got FM, it's got wave shaping, but it really is kind of designed to work in the modular environment. So although there's a lot of like additive techniques like FM, folding, wave shaping, ring modulation, it has like three different outputs that really shine when you mix them and then like run them into filter. So it's, it's like, I would say it's really like super hybrid synth it, and it like takes the best from each world, I would say. That's really cool. And if you haven't checked out the, the promo video, I, I suggest you do that because it has some, it kind of showcases the mysterious nature of it, which caught my attention. It's like, if you can make sounds mysterious and it's like you're peeking into this, this mental world that you're not familiar with, that is like so exciting for me. Yeah, I mean, we, we had this idea in mind that we really wanted to make like a piece of music so we commissioned for artists and they like used the pizza to make music. Maybe they used some other drums and some production on it. So it's not just purely the sound of pizza, but we wanted to really show it used in context in a piece of produced music. And uh, then we were like, okay, let's, let's make it into like a short film. And we contacted like one of our fans who is really into animation and so we come up with this like story of our hero Lisa and uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's got a name, the, the character? The character is called Lisa, Lisa. Like, like Lisa Shoe, yeah. like these Lisa Shoe figures you can draw on an oscilloscope, yeah. but also it's something in between that and pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we could take a look at the pizza module first. Yeah. yeah, so it's like here in the corner, now it's just doing like really bassy things. So we are listening now just to the main output. So it has like three outputs. You can see here it's the main output, pulse output and octave, octave output. So uh, this is the main output. On this knob I have an octave selection. Uh, and here is the FM index crossfader. So there are two modulators and uh, I can Let's maybe go to higher octave. So you can clearly see the green waveform is doing this nice FM. So that's that's the octave oscillator. And to the left on the fader, it's the ratio oscillator. And it's called ratio because you can set any harmonic ratio to the core frequency. And uh, they each of the sides has a, has a push button that like goes through four, four options. So if I'm on the ratio oscillator, if I flip it, like these lights cycle through four different ratios. So you can kind of, you can also kind of play it. And uh, on the ratio oscillator, you can set them. So you can like have like really any harmonic ratio. And on the octave side, you have this octave switch so it could be like, you know, zero is like the same octave. Uh, this is plus one octave, plus two octaves, or minus one, minus one octave. And maybe I'm uh, jumping ahead, but what aspects of this can you control over CV? Uh, pretty much everything. Uh, and uh, yeah, that is like a really interesting control scheme that we're gonna get to just in a minute. So... So now let's let's maybe look at this like shape control down here. So it's it, so this shape uh, fader it has again a button and you can basically like cycle through wave, fold, and a ring. 
So if I'm on the wave, it, it is wave shaping the modulating oscillators, not the main oscillator. So if the if FM index is zero, I'll also reset this, it doesn't really do anything, but as soon as I'm like modulating a tiny bit, you, you hear there's like a lot, lot of like subtlety that goes into the FM. And it, you can get like this almost like formant character. So it, it like wave shapes the modulating oscillators to saw wave on one end and to square on the other end. And if I do it on the ratio oscillator, which is more complex harmonics, you can get this like really like um, bright high end, bright high end. Yeah, and uh, then uh, there is a wave folder that's applied to the main output, so you can like. So there is there is two flavors. So if I go to the right. It's a, like very clean. I'll oh, that's the nice. waveform. So, so that's like very clean kind of folding. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and and if you if you set like one of them, if you set the wave to one value, yeah. and then shift over to fold, it's not like wave is still there. You select either wave or fold. So, uh, with this button, you select one of them. Yeah. But then we're kind of jumping ahead because we have the control knob, Sorry. and that's like a signable knob, okay. and uh, you can use them at the same time. Oh, so okay. if I if I hold this button and I say I want to, the control knob to control the wave, nice. I hold it. So now if I FM a little bit, so we hear it. So now the control knob is doing the wave shaping, yeah, yeah. and and this fader is doing the folding yeah. on, on top of that nice so now now we are getting into the like you know the it part about yeah. the pizza yeah, yeah. so, you have so the far it's been pretty straightforward <laughs> and so now yeah let's so see. you have the fm folding and wave shaping and and you can go like you know like the sound palette with just these it's like really like wide so it combines all the like synthesis techniques that I always kind of like Me too. and uh, creates a lot of like interesting, a lot of interesting crossovers there. Yeah, uh, so let's, let's maybe modulate it with... Uh, so now... I'm, uh, that's the FM index. That's the FM index. So, so the cool, so the cool thing is, it gets kind of wild. I'll simplify it. So the cool is that thing an, an attenuator control. This is an attenuator, so so you can go to the other direction with the modulation. So it's basically like you either move the crossfader to the left or to the right, and it's really easy to like have like both both FMs. Can, kind of on the on, on the other side of, uh, of of the fader, so there's yeah. like one CV that kind of gets gets you to FMing of of both oscillators, yeah. And last but not least, there is the ring modulation, and that's uh, basically cross ring modulation between the main oscillator and one of the modulating oscillators. So if I go to the right, it's similar to the cross fader. It does a ring mod with the octave oscillator. I'll put it higher, so you can. So there's a bit more of a subtlety, but it's like oh, nice. That's a nice ring. Yeah, and here again, it's kind of gentle. It, it's very gentle because like all the other wave shapers could be like really harsh, but this one is like really gentle. And also, if you change the ratios here, you can get to some like inharmonic harmonic intervals also so yeah and uh, what I really like to do is that you can like let's say I'll FM with the octave oscillator and I will ring modulate with the ratio oscillator and now they are like kind of both engaged yeah. in this way and 
when this becomes really fun is if I hit this button and go to the detune mode and I detune them a little bit then I have like FMing with a you know plus one octave and and ring modulating with another oscillator and maybe I add a bit more wave shape with the control knob nice so it gets you to like really interesting places and uh, I'm actually I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm really excited <laughs> about the detune function yeah that's great because uh, um, it's a bit uh, bit different so so if you're in the middle there's no detune and uh, is there like a safe zone in the middle yeah, that it's, it's quite a, there's a bit of a dead zone in the middle so like this kind of like no detune and if I go to the right it's like an exponential detune cool. so if I change octaves the beating frequency changes with it which you might like or not it really depends on, a, on what you want to do but if you go to the left it's linear yeah. so if I if I change octave, this is sort of like modulating LFO-ish thing that happens with the detune stays constant in all octaves, yeah. which I think is like really nice. Okay, so now that we have like the de you know, like a cool sound that I like, let's go to the mixer because the mixer is mixing the outputs, and I think this is like when when it's really really starts to become. But this is so now the mixer is another. That's a different module. Yeah, yeah. So it has like three yeah. outputs available: the main, octave, and pulse. So now let's m mix in the the octave oscillator. Maybe let's let's put it lower. Yeah. And mix in the the octave, like nice. the sub, you know. So you can get like this, like really beefy, low endy things and that that's kind of like courtesy of you know uh, subtractive synthesis that you have this sub octave and you can also mix in the pulse pulse input to get a bit more like high end so if you I don't know running into a filter with the Ikaria filter here you get like a really nice you know harmonics going on and, yeah. and the massive reverb on this and it's like a new Blade Runner. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. And the CV inputs on it. So what kind of inputs, control inputs have you got? So, um... So the control knob uh, that has a CV input, so you can assign the control to pretty much anything. To many things at once? Just one, yeah. one at a time. So if I hold this button, it also says on the panel long to assign. One of the things starts blinking. So I would be controlling the wave, folding, ring mode, or a built-in VCA. So I can also like make it quiet. So there is also built-in VCA, so you can just use it as a voice. Uh, or you can also go and control like the octave with it. So you can like, you know, run uh, some CV and, uh, and just control the octave or control the detune or like a linear FM. I think that's what this is. So it's, uh, yeah, you can also control like the Modulating oscillators. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll go back to. Maybe the reverb is also making it crazy. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, pull it down a little bit. So, so that's the control knob. So that's like the assignable control, and that's I think where uh, it really starts to make sense because I, I don't know if like who who of like people listening have used complex oscillators but uh, in my opinion they're too complex yeah. like to get the best sounds you basically modulate to three things maximum yeah. right so uh, and this one has like you know quite clearly laid controls and uh, so you have the control 
knob that you assign to like what what you want to do then there is the shape uh, that has dedicated input and then there is the fm index that also has a a thing you and the sync input is that like a yeah. a trig trig yeah, input yeah. so that that's a that's a trigger um, and you can like sync all the waveforms like if you're doing detune or something or you want to want it to like have it sim tempo sync so that that's what the sync input is for you can also do like a lot of different synced sync like classic oscillator sync effects so that again is a bit more of the subtractive um, east coast style it also has an external input yeah i was wondering about that yeah so is that a sound input so that's a sound input and uh basically the fm we're talking about is a face modulation so it does it it's a uh, it's more subtle than the linear fm it's it, it really like doesn't like mess up the, the pitch as much so you can plug in external signal and then that would replace the octave oscillator on the crossfader with uh, with the external oscillator so if you, if you have another oscillator that you might want to cv control independently and if if that uh, signal is heavily um, edited and uh, and sequenced we could expect some really crazy things there yeah. so that's like for the like really advanced fm uh, so if I don't know you want to have different pitch envelope on each oscillator or whatnot, that's kind of how how you would do it. Very cool. Plus there's the volt per octave input of course, which uh, so so there is there is and, uh, yeah excuse, the the sync input is that also uh, you mentioned the the VCA how do I control the VCA so is that so like so the VCA you you control by assigning the control ah okay so that's like one of the one of the options you, you click to when when you're assigning so the there is no it's not like a an envelope in there it's just uh, VCA that actually is one of the things we got as feature request from yeah. beta testers yeah. so we we might thinking the trig could yeah, potentially exactly. so we might like build in like an envelope that controls the VCA and potentially is normalized to the FM index or something like that. You heard it here first. So let's that that, that that's not there, you know. Yeah, that's not there. Uh, we won't be shipping it with this, but it's really easy to update the module. There is a USB connector, so there's gonna be updates. Uh, Would you? Is it like fully digital, or is it? Uh, it's, it's fully digital. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, and also like the tuning on the oscillator that really speaks to it. So, so like, uh, I, I don't know if you realize how kind of crazy this sounds for 8 HP module. And it's still like, you know, like it's still very playable. It's like, it's, it's not really cramped, but it's digital. It's always in tune you, and, 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 and kind of the, the tuning of this oscillator is kind of special because you have this like big knob that you can use for tuning but like most of the time like 99% of the time you don't want to tune your oscillator so you have like more useful options so there is the octave there is the detune and this button just switches between those but if I like ho hold it for a while I get to adjust like semitones oh, nice. and, and fine tune and it's like very fine fine tune so, but the idea is that if, if you don't want to tune the oscillator or like accidentally detune it or like get out of tune, it won't happen. Is there, is there just, like a, you know, a nifty way of resetting the tune? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty easy. You just like long press it and put, put the knob, knob, knob in the center and, that, and that, that just resets it, you know. So... so and there is also like a really easy way to calibrate the volt per octave input with any source, which I'm kind of proud of. So you kind of you kind of just play zero volts and two volts, and it like learns what your source is, and then it's perfectly in tune. What well, is there like a mode you enter? Yeah. yeah, yeah, there is a mode you enter with these two buttons, and uh, here you select if the volt per input is calib uh, quantized. So that's what this LED shows you. And then you can hit this button, play zero volts, two volts, and, and you're ready to, ready to go. So it auto calibrates. And it th that's kind of like the important thing on oscillators to match it with your source. So it's in tune. 
So it's, it's not only about the oscillator to make your system in tune, it also needs to be the source. And uh, w w w with this method, you're not really reliant on the pizza being in tune, but if your source is a little bit out of tune, it can compensate for it as well. Really cool, and uh, I think uh, maybe you didn't realize viewers, but all of this has been controlled from CV uh, signals from another box just below it, which is called Soft Pop Two. Could you could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean that's like we released it in January, and uh, we haven't talked about it that much because they got sold out like really quick. <laughs> So this is it's it's much smaller than I expected on the press photo. It kind of feels like it's a little bit larger, but it's really small. Yeah, I mean it's it's really like it's it's this is how the size came about. You know, this is like the user experience we want people to have. Yeah. So um, portable gaming device. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a um, nice object to interact with. It's designed to be like really. Uh, real playable with the faders, and there is like a really interesting sequencer that I think you especially would like. <laughs> so, uh, so let's uh, so let's see. Uh, I'll turn down the reverb. So the sound. This is now the sound from this. Yeah. Yeah. Now. 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 We're, now we're hearing the soft pop, and we're all just. To a simpler waveform. So the, I'll flip the switch to go into the drone mode. So now, so now we're hearing the. So there is a oscillator, filter, and envelope. These are like the three main components. So these two knobs are oscillator nice. and oscillator modulation. So there is, uh, there is a CV connected there. Uh, maybe I can take a patch cable and uh, just like, you know, uh, give you an idea of... Yeah, well, here's patching. Uh, this big round LED that kind of flashes reminds me so much of Peter Edwards when he's uh, yeah. performing live. He has this Big, big kind of oh, yeah. was fair. This is so Peter. This is Casper Basler. It's it. We we made this with Peter. That's that should have been the first thing I said. So I just patched the envelope to control the oscillator, and you can hear these like nice arpeggios. So it's controlling the oscillator before quantizer. So. So there is a fader, it plays through a scale, and we have eight scales to select. So I can go to a different scale, it's a ma major scale. All of the eight scales are editable, so you can like make any custom scales. And, and you just like flip the scale like really easy. And uh, then if I, if I play the sequence, so this is like the sequence, uh, I can change the sequence by recording with the pitch fader. Is it eight steps? It's eight steps, but there is a lot of like chaining things going on, so I'll, I'll show, you, show you in a second. So if I hold the scale, and let's say I know this is C minor, and I want like two times C minor, then a flat major and and B flat major. Then you see it it changed the scales. So That's you can be cute. so you basically can write a chord progression on it. So you, you can I mean like right now I just have chords. They're, they're not really scales. Yeah. They're chords. And that's that's how I that's how I end up using it most of the time anyway. But. Uh, uh, like a lot of people refer to the software as this like crazy machine that like does like noisy stuff. But to me, like with, with this setup, if you learn to like, you know, tame it, it really is like a songwriter synth. 
No, not sure if it really appeals to songwriters though, but like, like to me it does because like I do write songs that do have chords. I guess you really. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, you can just like make these sequences with chord progressions. And the cool thing is that like I can still like uh, offset offset the whole sequence, and I'm also offsetting pre quantizer So this is not like a this is not an octave offset, but this is more of an inversion. And it's taking into account the scale. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and the, now the default routing uh, on the soft pop. If I pull up this fader, is that there is a sample and hold normalized to the mod input. So it basically adds like randomness to the melody. So you have like a sort of like inversion and a randomness. So if if I don't add the randomness, it's just you know the sequence and now, now there is some like random edit notes but uh, but the chord, chord progression is still there uh, and yeah then there's the pattern button I can switch pattern and I can also change the two patterns so now it's gonna be changing two different patterns so yeah it's a eight step sequencer but like with chaining it really it does a lot, it does a lot, yeah. So, and there is a lot of, like, you know, maybe I can flip the. It's like a lot of different, like, ratcheting effects. Is it quick for you to make a new scale just on the, on the fly? Yeah, sure. Uh, so let, let's go to this scale, and uh, if, if you, I'll stop the sequencer so it's easier to see. So if I'm holding the scale, uh, so either I can use a MIDI keyboard to just like you know press something, and then I would press the button close to the MIDI, and that would just copy the scale from MIDI, or I can just go up and down, and basically. There is a there is a little cheat sheet here on the side. You can see that. So it basically shows C C sharp D D sharp E with these with these LEDs. So if you go up down, I know this is C C sharp D D sharp E, and with this button you either turn them on or off. So I don't know which scale do you want me to program. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I I got used to it like really quick. So I think now this is probably just a. This is probably like complete C minor scale. So it's not just a chord. Jazzy. Yeah. Like a blues scale. And that might there might be a blue note in there. Yeah. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Yeah. So you can really like have any selection of notes, notes in the scale. And all of this um, feedback communicator section there. Yeah. So. Uh, that's where the crazy part yeah, is. That, that's the patch base. So I've been showing you the musical side yeah. of the software, which is. Maybe my favorite side, but yeah. like let's let's go to the let's go to Crazy Town. So this is the envelope modulating the filter. So this is the filter cutoff. I can add some resonance to it. I can have the looping envelope controlling the filter. So this is the speed of the envelope. It goes to audio rate, and this is the shape. And if I go low with the oscillator, it goes well to sub audio. And I think this this is kind of like where the name comes from, the soft pop. This is kind this is kind of what the original soft pop was like kind of known for, that it had these like really like wet mm. wet dripping sounds so yeah 
Yeah, so there's this still, still this filter that makes it sound like really wet. But you know, like really quickly from that, you just go, you go back to the melodies, like in just a few gestures. And the sequencer, uh, the CV, can can the CV from the sequencer be patched to different things? Yeah, so I was controlling the pizza oscillator with the CV. And you can patch it into something else here and make some interesting... Yeah, exactly. So that is, that, that is like few things uh, about... The, those outputs from the sequencer, so there is a gate that triggers the envelope, that's these gates. But there is also a slide gate, so in the sequencer I can add like slides, two steps. Right? <laughs> that's uh, and if I'm holding slide and going up and down, I can like turn the sliding off and kind of just use the slide gates to trigger something else, these gates. So so right now they are triggering the the pizza patch. So I have like two sets of gates, one for the soft pop. That's these and one's for the pizza. And uh, then the CV is controlling the pizza also. Sounds cool. I think it's a strength that you can go from a, from this uh, very melodic place and very quickly go into crazy town. Yeah, exactly. Like the ranges are like really wide, and that's kind of like what for me makes it into an instrument. Mm. So like if you get the sensitivity for it, you can really like play very melodic stuff and go to like really experimental harsh and like brutal like noises like in no time and that's I think is what's like really interesting about the software because it has both and you, like you can really easily transition so on a lot of scenes like they're either good at noise or at melody but this one is I think good at both and uh, and it's like really easy to go into you know both so that's that's I think where, where this, this gets like really interesting. Yeah. Uh, every time I hear stuff from the soft pop and soft pop 2, it has this special vibe that is just, yeah, un unmistakable. Uh, and it's, and like you said before, it's known to have this kind of droplets kind of sounds, but then yeah. you yeah. can gradually go to totally different places. I think it sounds nice. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of like a lot of the videos I've seen people put online were like very this like noisy things or, or, or acid like either either one of those and uh, I think it, it kind of is like if just guitar happened to be a thing and people got guitars they would play it like in a, in a very like you know in a certain way like not really knowing the nuance of the instrument so I'm kind of expecting as the time goes on people will get more and more like nuanced musical on the soft pop but some people made, made, made amazing stuff. Like, don't, don't get me wrong. But like, it, it really is an is an instrument that you need to learn and learn to play. And uh, I, th I think the tone, the tonality and tone and charisma of the instrument has something very genuine. And if I played it, I think I'd be tempted to slow down and play it really slowly. Like have like really take some time with all of the tones <laughs> yeah yeah no totally you can do it and uh, there is actually uh, a new thing we haven't touched on yet and that's like what we're kind of showing here at Superbooth and uh, there is a digital oscillator now so like we shipped all units with an analog oscillator but you can go in flip a jumper Ooh. update the firmware and have a new digital oscillator. Wow, how does that work? So, I'll, I'll, I'll show you, so I'll go to the drone mode. So, you have like eight different waveforms, so if I hold these two buttons, I can select different waveforms. 
here on the scope it's the it's the yellow waveform uh, so I have like triangle saw and then I have like a lot of like other bit more crazy waveforms and uh, this this one must be my favorite because it's like detuned saw wave and if I hold slide and move this fader I can like detune the saw waves Or I can go down and make it like a sub octave. Can pull up the volume a little bit. So, so you can do these like detuned sounds that that change very slowly. So talking about you know playing it slow. I think this this update really kind of opens it to like a lot more like ambient territory because there is like these detuned uh, oscillators but there is like yeah there's like eight different waveforms eight, eight different sort of like wave shapers detuned saw is just one of them there are others that like talk to like different there's some like really harsh ones yeah that, so that's kind of that, 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 that's kind of the big news for soft pop and also the um, so, so the analog oscillator was an analog oscillator, so it got out of tune. Uh, there was a automatic tuning, so you just press the button and it was back in tune. Now you don't have to do it; it's in tune all the time. So yeah, that that's like that's kind of like the bigger news on the soft pop front, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be having these. Uh, shipped with the second batch that we are building currently and hopefully we're shipping around july so we'll also release it for all the existing users as a as a, as a free update sweet very cool uh, i think uh, unless you have something that you feel like you forgot to mention um, i guess people ask about the pizza like when it's shipping and stuff so we we are shipping in like Two weeks, two three weeks, uh, and uh, the pre-orders are uh, are on, so you can buy it. We're, sh we're shipping in two three weeks. The price is around three hundred with tax. Cool, and this and the soft pop too. And the soft pop is currently out of stock. But we're building them, and uh, it's uh, it's gonna be available, I think, in July. So, yeah. And what's the price of that? Oh, John, what's the price of soft pop? Ooh, uh, on the spot, I, I think. Wow, I'm gonna have to look it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> we need to check the price on the web store. Five hundred, six hundred. I don't know. Right below five hundred. Okay. I'll correct it. If if it's totally off, I'll correct it right here. Yeah, look, we're a salesman. We don't know. <laughs> I think it goes back to one of the very, very early videos I made with you and you realized you were a company and you had to figure out how to do tax and all that. <laughs> Look, you've come a long way. I guess, I guess, yeah. I mean, that was, um, yeah, that was the focus in the past years to really make the company stable so we could really, you know, you know, all be kind of you know feeling comfortable and like have the have the development and innovation running without too much stress we made a huge progress i think there is still work to do but uh, that that has been like the main focus company wise and uh, and that certainly requires a bit more planning and or to be a bit more organized yeah uh, cool i'm looking forward to the future and the present with, with you guys Always a pleasure to, to, to see what you're up to. Yeah, great to see you too. It's a pleasure. Bastel Instruments.